this is the next compartment we're going to go into. I consider the arm from the elbow to the shoulder, and so we're going to be taking a look at two, actually, the anterior and the posterior compartment of the arm. They always call the anterior arm the flexor compartment because it flexes either the shoulder or the elbow in the same way the posterior compartment is typically called the extensor compartment because it extends either the shoulder or the elbow, depending on the muscle. So let's take a look at the number of muscles that are found in here. There's three on the anterior compartment and one on the posterior. So when we take a look at the first one, the anterior compartment, there's three muscles. The first one is the biceps brachii. As you can imagine, bi means two, so we are talking about a muscle that has two heads, biceps brachii. This is how I always remember it. It has a long and a short head. A uh, long head is lateral, so if you just look at the model, this side's lateral, so you're gonna take a look at this one. Don't get thrown because the model looks as if this one's the shorter one, but the tendon actually extends all the way up, as you can see, and continues all the way up to the supraglenoid tubercle. Uh, compared to this one, it, the short head compares only to the coracoid process. So this is the biceps brachii. It goes down to the radial tuberosity and then uh, does flexion of the elbow and the shoulder and does supination. When we take a look, we kind of divide up its actions. This does both flexion of the elbow and the shoulder. But this one that comes right along this, if you follow the short head of biceps brachii, it comes down to another muscle that's actually unnumbered. This is the coracobrachialis. Notice how it starts from the coracoid process and ends in the brachium. It only crosses over one joint. It only has one action, flexion of the elbow, or sorry, flexion of the shoulder rather than that of the elbow. So that's the coracobrachialis. If I turned it on this side, notice uh, our models are unable to lift off the biceps brachii because if you were to lift that off, you would see the full extent of the next muscle right here. This is called the brachialis. So the brachialis itself is a very, very powerful flexor of the elbow because it starts from the brachium and then goes down to the ulnar tuberosity. No supination here, just flexion of the elbow. And so this is the brachialis. Notice the, the running theme, brachy, 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 biceps brachii coracobrachialis, brachialis. Those are our three anterior muscles of the ar anterior arm. Let's take a look at the one muscle of the posterior arm, making up about two-thirds of our arm itself. So if you want big arms, work out the triceps brachii. This is the triceps brachii. You know you're responsible for all three heads. The first one is the long head. It's very characteristic because the long head always cuts in between the two teres muscles, right? Teres minor, teres major, there's the long head. Once you're in the long head, you can get orientated by going laterally or medially, and those are the two other heads. Triceps brachii, long head. Triceps brachii, lateral head. And then right here is just this little slip of fibers here that looks pretty small, but on a cadaver, it's actually a little bit larger. This is the triceps brachii, medial head. So to review, biceps brachii, long head. Biceps brachii, short head. Coracobrachialis, brachialis. Triceps brachii, long head, triceps brachii, lateral head, triceps brachii, medial head.